Hello, and welcome to Greece Public Library's book break for November 17th. My name is Kirstra. I'm one of the librarians here. I moderate our Pints and Prose book discussion group. I'm joined, as always, by my colleague, Claire. Hello, I am Claire. I moderate as the Page Charms Book Club and also our Facebook Historical Book Club. Mm -hmm. And today we've just got a roundup for you of some things that we have read recently and liked. Yes. Excellent. Do you want to start us off? Sure. Ironically, the first one is going to be my As the Page Turns for November, and it's called The Stranger in the Woods, The Extraordinary Story of the Last True Hermit by Michael Finkel. Um, so this is a nonfiction. It was really interesting, and it was a very fast read, I felt, for nonfiction. Um, most people dream of escaping of the modern world, but not many people would actually do it. Well, Christopher Knight in, I believe, 1986, drove his car up into the woods of Maine and did just that. He really wasn't prepared. Um, he set up this remote campsite and basically he didn't really interact with people for the next 27 years. What he did do <laughs> was break in to people's homes and various camps. He was uh, convicted of over a thousand break-ins in, um, in Maine one of the most extensive burglary cases in the United States. Um, he had a very strict code of conduct about what he wouldn't steal, but like batteries he loved, anything that he could use in his camp, like he even, he loved reading material, but after he was done with it, he would take the magazines and build like blocks to make flooring for this remote camp because he essentially stayed in a tent in the winters in Maine. Um, he had sleeping bags. I don't know how he did it. I don't know how he survived. And um, it's just so unusual to see the interviews with him and this, the person that wrote the book actually started to communicate with him. And when he was in jail, he would visit him. Um, doesn't know if he was like somewhere on the spectrum because he was incredibly intelligent, but definitely had some difficulties with socialization. Mm -hmm. Um, like looking people in the eye, a lot of classic like Asperger signs and mm -hmm. whatnot. But I, I tell you, it was completely fascinating to me. And I can't wait to discuss it with my book group to see what they thought. Yeah, I also read this book and I loved it also. Um, yeah, it's, it's super interesting getting into, so they call him the last true hermit. And it really makes you think about what it means to be a hermit mm -hmm. and whether he really was one yeah. he certainly wasn't self-sufficient right as you say stealing from yeah everyone yeah in Maine. yeah <laughs> um but it's also i as you were talking i was like you know what this is really an interesting counterpoint to into the wild which is the book about chris mccandless um who walked into the wilderness in alaska and unfortunately, his story turned out differently. Mm -hmm. He ended up dying because he wasn't prepared and there was no one to steal from right. where yeah. he was. It was just an empty bus with no food. Yeah. yeah. But it kind of makes you think how that story might have turned out differently if, you know, it yeah. had been a less remote location. I don't know. Yeah. So I'm just putting that together. Yeah. It was interesting to me, to all the different theories, like some people that were like, oh, he didn't do it. You know, when he was, mm -hmm. he was arrested, he didn't smell. He didn't pass the smell test. You know, his camp reached, but he didn't, you know, how did he stay clean? And um, because he yeah. was very meticulous about shaving and washing and yeah, it, it really was bizarre. So, yeah. but, mm. but I liked it. Yeah, it should be a, a really good discussion for your group. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I will start then with my nonfiction for this time, which is Bad Blood, Secrets and Lies in a Silicon Valley Startup by John Carreyrou. This is the story of Theranos, oh. which, uh, if you are not aware, was a, sil a Silicon Valley startup um, valued in 2014 at $9 billion. And the idea of, behind Theranos was that they were going to revolutionize blood testing by performing all of these tests on a finger stick. So instead of drawing your blood from a vein vials and tubes of it, they would just prick your finger like they do at the Red Cross before you give blood and run all of their tests off of that little sample. Of course, 
as we know now, the technology never worked. Yeah. It never worked. Uh, and it's just this crazy, crazy story. Uh, Elizabeth Holmes was the CEO of the business. She was the founder and creator. She dropped out of Stanford and started her own tech business. She kind of modeled herself after Steve Jobs, like to the point where she wore a black turtleneck yeah. all the time because that's what Steve Jobs wore. Yeah. And people talk about, uh, former employees talk about like she would have inspirational quotes on the walls and all of this stuff, like trying to capture the feeling of a Silicon Valley tech startup, but she never had the background in the science and she never had anyone on her staff with the background in the science really. Or if she did, and they started asking questions about why they were doing the things that they were doing, they just got fired. And she would like threaten to sue everyone and basically lawyered up and scared everyone into submission for years. And she had all of these famous people on her board, Mad Dog Mattis, the former, uh, not Secretary of State, was he Secretary of State? I don't remember. Well, and now I don't know his exact title, so should have written that down. But Mad Dog Mattis was on her board of directors, and all of these people, she just conned them yeah. completely. Yeah. So it's fascinating. If you think you have worked in a dysfunctional workplace, you have no idea right. until you read this book. That was like the pyramid scheme of all pyramid yes, schemes. <laughs> absolutely. People lost millions. Yes. Absolute millions. Yeah. So she went from the company being valued at $9 billion to zero yeah. over the space of like two years. So there was a, an internal whistleblower. And eventually that person got in contact with John Kerryrew, who's a Wall Street Journal uh, journalist. Okay. And who writes about um, medical and biomedical stuff. And he kind of took the story and ran with it. So he published the first expose, expose. on Theranos, I want to say in 2015. And then from there, he published additional articles and then turned the whole thing into the book. So excellent wild read about some crazy people that will make you feel thankful for the minor irritations of your own workplace. And, and isn't that just like going to trial now mm -hmm. yeah yeah it took a while yes so. absolutely they yeah. had really good lawyers that yes. they paid for with their nine billion dollars right. of other people's money <laughs> of other people's money yep that's the way to do it yeah so. anyway all right well back to like after i read a nonfiction, usually i have to go for like a fast easy thriller <laughs> which is exactly what i did and i have the neighbor's secret by l allison heller and this one, uh, as best I can describe, if you like, like Big Little Lies mm -hmm. by Leanne Moriarty, you're probably going to like this book. It is, um, the setting is Cottonwood Estates. I'm, I'm picturing Texas. I'm not sure if it was mm -hmm. Texas, but, you know, a very perfect place to raise your perfect children that are in all kinds of activities. Um, your sense of social, you know, being is is done with your cottonwood book club so we have our, our typical cast of characters we have a hyperactive book leader who is you know has children that she's push push pushing for perfection she's always happy and you kind of have like little letters or emails from her about the book club choice what they're reading and like in the beginning of the chapters um, you have some other families all of which have some secrets uh, there is one mother whose son is, they've been having a lot of emotional problems with him. They've gone from school to school and have now found themselves in this neighborhood. And he actually stabbed a lab partner in the hand with a scalpel. So now he is looking at alternate educational mm -hmm. um, things. So mm -hmm. he goes to like a very Christian, very small school where he ends up thriving, but we'll see, you know, where that goes. There's also a mysterious vandal in the neighborhood that is doing things like burning their Thanksgiving thankfulness tree and other, yeah, 
<laughs> it's great. So who is this vandal? So the, the poor mother with the one son is worried that not only is her son a sociopath, he's also the neighborhood vandal. But there's plenty of other competition with the other people's children in there. So it is just fun. It's exciting, not exciting, but just fun to see what all the secrets are, of course, how they're all intertwined, um, how the different book members go into the book club and what they think about it. And there's also a woman, there's like a tragedy from many years ago that ties back into this. So with a kind of a surprise twist at the ending. And like any other thriller, you really, I don't want to give too much of the plot away because that's half the fun is, mm -hmm. is discovering these little things. So just if you want a nice, fun thriller, mm -hmm. you know. It does sound good. Yeah. Some popcorn. Some popcorn. Mm -hmm. The murder, maybe, you know, mm. lots of fun. I do like a good murder. Yeah, me too. A little bloodthirsty. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So both of my others are on the more serious side. I'm going to go, I think, most serious, and then I'll come back to slightly less serious. Yes. This one has been on my list. It's so good. Transcendent Kingdom by Yaj Yassi. Uh, this book was really good. Uh, it is at its most basic, really a book about grief and about families, which sometimes you got to be in the right headspace mm -hmm. to kind of dive into that. Exactly. Uh, but it is the story of a Ghanaian immigrant family who settles in Alabama, which I don't know, you might not think is where a Ghanaian family might want to settle, but there they are. So in a kind of small town in Alabama. So our main character is Gifty. She is the younger daughter. She is, um, and this is one of those like present day and then flashbacks okay. kind of filling in the gaps books. So present day, she is a doctoral candidate at Stanford studying addictive behavior and neuroscience in mice. And her brother, we find out, her older brother, Nana, has died, and we find out he has died from an opioid overdose. So hence Gifty's interest in addiction and addictive behaviors. So there's Gifty and Nana and their mother, and that's sort of the, the core characters that the book builds itself around, but Gifty is our narrator. She's kind of the focus of the whole thing. And really, we've got questions of mental illness, addiction, grief, um, science and religion, faith versus science. Okay. Um, so a lot of kind of big themes moving through and there's, there's not necessarily a huge amount of plot in this book. It's not a plotty book. It is an exploration of a family and of a theme. So a lot of it is kind of almost meditative, mm -hmm. the writing, which I really liked. I listened to this one, which again, anytime you have characters like from Ghana who might speak in a Ghanaian accent, I do like to listen to the yeah. audiobook and get a real flavor for that. Um, so I would recommend the audio. I thought it was just a really lovely book about some difficult subject matter, but ultimately very hopeful. I read her home going, you know, mm -hmm. she really liked it. So I've had that one on my list. Yeah. I think it's on my stack of shame actually. <laughs> you know. Yeah. And I haven't read home going, but now I'm more interested yeah. to read home going after reading this one. Oh, good. So, yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to dive into a serious one as well. Um, this one is called No Hiding in Boise by Kim Hooper. And this is about a shooting episode in Boise, Idaho. But unlike a lot of other ones which focus on the shooter's viewpoint, this one is really focusing more on the victims of the shooting or involved other parties, like the mother of the shooter. <coughs> um, it's really interesting to see how people deal with their grief, their shock, and how they interact together. Um, so 
it was really the one that got me the most, of course, was the mother of the shooter, um, how she came to reconcile. There's so much guilt there. Mm -hmm. Like, did I do something yeah. wrong because her, his father passed away? So she was alone a lot of the time. But, you know, they had a nice home, but she just kept racking through her mind trying to figure it out. And then um, we have several people that died. You hear their stories. And then there are two people that were injured in the shooting. One pretty severely, and that is a young father who has probably a two-year-old at home and his wife, and he was shot in the bar, but she doesn't know why he was there. Mm. So, you know, she's grappling with, and he can't speak to her because he's in a coma. So she's trying to decipher why was he there? Like, was he meeting someone? And it really isn't what you think. It's not a typical thing. Um, so yeah, it's, it's not a thriller, but you, it's like watching, you know, you, you, when you're so engrossed in a national tragedy or something mm -hmm. else, you can't stop reading because yeah. you want to find out what happens to these people. You want to hope for some kind of resolution. Um, and although it doesn't wrap it all up, you know, in a bow, it does give you some hope at the end that there was a good resolution. Um, but yeah, it was, it was interesting. It was not like a lot of things I've read. So yeah, I really, really enjoyed that one. Nice. Hmm. Sounds interesting, but difficult. Yeah. Uh, but another one I think would make a great book discussion if they could get into oh, it. Yeah. yeah. I bet. And it didn't really go too much into like the more gory or gruesome. Mm -hmm. It was more from the you know, that part of the story is like over and done. It was more the reactions of all the people. The involved. aftermath. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Nice. All right. Well, my last one is one that has been all over. It was a Reese's Book Club pick, um, which is The Henna Artist by Alka Joshi. And this is a historical fiction set in the 1950s in India, in Jaipur specifically. Our main character is Lakshmi. Uh, at 17, she runs away from an abusive marriage um, and in a small, small, tiny village and runs away to Jaipur to reinvent herself. So she really makes a whole business and life for herself um, as a henna artist. So the, the henna name. artist. <laughs> So she um, does henna for all kinds of wealthy upper caste Jaipur elite ladies. And she also has some other sort of side hustles that go along with that, that you learn more about as the book progresses. And the real meat of the story takes off when her husband, so the, we're really set like 13 years in the future. So Lakshmi is now about 30. She has you know, this thriving small business. And then her husband, whom she abandoned 13 years ago, arrives out of the blue. And with him is her sister, Radha, who she didn't know existed. Um, so Radha basically gets deposited on Lakshmi's doorstep because her parents have died. And obviously Lakshmi has not been in contact with her parents since abandoning her entire life. So we have Lakshmi and Radha trying to figure out how to live together and become a family together. Lakshmi never really expected to be in that kind of maternal role. So there's a lot of negotiation that's happening. Mm -hmm. And it's got such an interesting setting because we have a lot of like mid-century American novels, like Revolutionary Road and all of those. But this is 1950s in India, which is just post-partition. So that happened in 1950. So things are still very unsettled as far as that goes. We've got issues of class, of caste, of religion, and kind of this whole tension between the traditional and the modern that the book is exploring. So I found it fascinating um, you get lots of <laughs> Here we go. Oh, well. you get lots of insight into how women lived. So we see both the upper class or upper caste, I should say, in India, of the um, Lakshmi's ladies. Yes. She refers to them, my ladies, um, her clients, 
And then you also have um, some glimpses into the lower caste and how they live. Um, very different, as you might imagine. Uh, so it's it was really fascinating um, learning about that period in India and a very different culture, experiencing that post-World War II mm -hmm. era with a very different set of social issues. Yeah. I've had that one on my list. Actually, mm -hmm. I started it on Did a you? car trip. So I'm, mm -hmm. a, I'm about halfway through. I need to finish. Yeah, it's yeah. so good. And it gets it gets much more intense in the yeah. second half. Like, things oh, yeah. happen. Ah! Um, it is the first of a planned trilogy. The second book is either out or coming out very soon. I think it is out. Okay, titled yeah. The Secret Keeper of Jaipur. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if there's a title for the third one yet. But okay. yeah, so The Henna Artist, start a new series learn about a new place, travel without even leaving your own home. It's the way to do it. Absolutely. Um, so we'd love to hear from you all, whether you have read any of these books, what your thoughts were, or what else you've been reading and what you would recommend to us and your fellow readers. Yeah. And next time in December, we're going to be doing our best of 2021. Best of 2021. Yes. It's one of my favorites. Yeah. It's hard. Yeah. figuring out what books. what to talk about right but i love it um we yes yeah, so we're doing best of 2021 we're only going to be doing one episode in december um because holidays etc but we are super looking forward to that one yeah and um, as always we want to hear what you've been reading and what you think of our choices absolutely yeah. all right well we'll see you in december and until then happy reading happy reading happy thanksgiving happy thanksgiving